This reaction, so this sample problem, is going to be for lesson E2E, Gas Laws, Boyle's, and Charles's Law. First, we have a sample problem for using Boyle's Law, which is P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. We first of all go through and we list out all of the symbols. We have initial pressure, initial volume, secondary pressure, and secondary volume. Since this is a word problem, we have to go through and figure out which one goes with which. The question reads, in an automobile engine, the gaseous fuel-air mixture enters the cylinder and is compressed by a moving piston before it is ignited. In a certain engine, the initial cylinder volume is 0.725 liters. After the piston moves down, the volume is 0.075 liters. The fuel-air mixture initially has a pressure of one atmosphere. Calculate the pressure of the compressed fuel-air mixture, assuming that both temperature and the amount of gas remains constant. So, as we go through and reread, we have 0.725 liters. Since liters is a unit of volume, we're going to put that down as our initial volume. As we read down with volumes written again, that's going to be V2, that's 0 0.075 liters. The fuel-air mixture initially has a pressure of 1 atmosphere. So the pressure here is 1 atmosphere. And the question is, what is our secondary pressure? Now, first step, after we list out all of our uh, variables, is to make sure all of the units match. That is the key to doing these problems. The units of P1 must match those of P2. The units of V1 must match those of V2. Since the volumes are both in liters, we're good. If one was in milliliters, we would have to convert one or the other. It doesn't matter as long as they both have the same units. And since P1 is in atmospheres, we know the units for P2 are also going to be in atmospheres. Next, using algebra, we are going to take this formula and rearrange it to isolate the unknown, which in this case is P2. Since P2 is currently on top, all we need to do is divide both sides by V2 to isolate it. V2 cancels. P2 is all by itself on one side of the equation. And rewriting it, we have P2 is equal to P1 times V1 over V2. Once we've rearranged it in letter form, we now plug the numbers in. P1 was 1.00 atmospheres. V1 is equal to 0 0.725 liters. And V2 on the bottom is equal to 0 0.075 liters. The liters cancel out, leaving us with atmospheres. On my calculator, any number that's on top I multiply, the numbers on the bottom I divide. So I simply take 1, I'm not going to bother, multiply it by 0.725, so I take 0.725, and divide by 0 0.075 equals. Now, for significant figures, I look at all the numbers that I enter into the formula. Whichever one has the fewest, that's how many the answer must have. Since this has 3, this has 3, but this only has 2, the answer has to be rounded off to 2 digits. So instead of 9.666, it is simply 9.7. So 9.7 atmospheres is the answer to that question. Now the second, now this sample problem is for Charles's Law. 
The question reads, in former times, gas volume was used as a way to measure temperature by using devices called gas thermometers. Consider a gas that has a volume of 0.675 liters at 35 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. What is the temperature in kelvins of a room where this gas has a volume of 0.35 liters at one atmosphere of pressure? Well, first of all, since pressure does not change, that means it is not going to be part of this problem. So I can just cross that out and ignore pressure. So pressure remains constant. Now I go through and I read the question again, this time using the units to indicate what the various uh, variables are. So the first number I come across is 0 0.675 liters. Liters is a unit of volume, so that tells me that that is V1, 0 0.675 liters. At 35 degrees Celsius, so that's temperature, oops, temperature 1, and that's 35 degrees Celsius. Now, I know that all temperatures must be in degrees Celsius, excuse me, uh, must be in kelvins. Therefore, I'm right away going to add the 273 to this in order to get the units in Kelvin. So 35 plus 273 gives me 308 Kelvin. And then I keep reading, what is the temperature? So it's asking for T2 in Kelvins of a room where this gas has a volume of, and it gives me another volume, 0 0.535 liters. Now, rule number one, units must match. Liters and liters match, therefore that's done. Rule number two, temperatures must be in Kelvin. I've already converted it to Kelvin, so that's done. Rule number three, I have to take the formula and rearrange it to isolate the unknown while still in letter form. Now the formula with just volume and temperature is Charles's law. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Now, in order to isolate T2, or any variable, I have to make sure that it is a numerator and that it is all by itself on one side of the equation. Since T2 is a denominator, my first step is to make it a numerator by cross-multiplying. So that means that T2 times V1 is equal to T1 times V2. Next, I need to isolate it by getting rid of V1. In order to get rid of a variable, I do the opposite of what, it's being, what it, it is doing to the unknown that I'm looking for. Since V1 is multiplying T2, I want to divide by V1 in order to get rid of it. Those cancel out, leaving T2 all by itself. Of course, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I also divide by V1 on that side. So my formula is T2 is equal to T1 times V2 divided by V1. Now I plug in the numbers over here in their appropriate places. T1 is 308 Kelvin. V2 is 0 0.5. 535 liters and V1 is 0 0.675 liters. Liters both cancel out leaving me only with Kelvin and that's going to be the unit of my answer. Now for the calculations I go 308 times 0.535 divided by 0.675 equals. Since all these have three significant figures, I know my answer needs to be rounded off to three significant figures. And the answer becomes 244 Kelvin. And there it is.